Yeah, so we were in Hollydale Park, Los Angeles, uh, California. We were with a group of sky watchers and it was daylight sky watching. And one of the uh, people there spotted, I don't even know if it was us, spotted a tiny, tiny silvery white dot in the sky. Yeah, I saw personally three like lights and they kind of were going in a circle at the top. And it, and it really has like a neck-like form that's darker and it's like, is that the throat? Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. It's really a, a very neat capture. My background is, for the last five years, we've been traveling the globe. Um, we've been to 14 countries, checking out UFOs, actually. We've got some neat pictures of them. We've had some experiences. And this one today is something that we actually caught early in this five-year journey. Um, but, you know, there's quite a phenomenon around this. There's things in the sky during the day. There's things in the sky at night. And most of the time, we really just don't know what it is. It, it actually raises more questions than answers. And like the one we're talking about today, like, what is it? Yeah. I'm just going to ask you a few questions about your UFO capture. Okay. Can you explain where you were and like how you how you first noticed it in the sky? Yeah, okay. Um, so we were in LA doing um, just a little get together with some friends who also do UFOlogy and we were just looking into the sky and we were hoping for captures that afternoon. Um, there's a lot of meditation going on and I just remember looking up into the sky and oh, what's that? And you never really know until you get your camera out and you zoom in. And it was just a really just just captivating, awesome experience. Yes, we were with a group of uh, sky watchers in Hollydale Park in uh, L.A., Los Angeles, California. And we had our cameras set up. There was a tiny, tiny silvery white light in the sky, almost like a day star, almost like Venus. Venus can appear sometimes during the day. But when we zoomed in on it, we saw this strange object that we're calling it a jellyfish. Yeah, it's really hard to see. Sometimes like they're so far away that you only see a flash or a speck and you're you understand it's something out there and it, it doesn't look like a plane. Um, but it's it's more of a flash. It's a lot of flashing. And that's I remember that's what drew my attention to this one is it just it flashed. It seemed to call my attention. I was, oh, what is that? Something it's almost a sparkle. And then you don't know till you zoom in. It was neat. It was weird because it doesn't really look like anything. It just looks like a floating weird movement. It, I mean, we started calling it jellyfish because it just kind of looks like it's floating across the sky, kind of like a jellyfish. Yeah. Had you ever seen anything like that before? Um, we do this quite often where we go out and we, we meditate and we get ourselves into the zone and we hope to see things. And I've never seen anything quite as almost it's almost creature-like is this. Um, we've seen a lot of flashes, a lot of orbs, a lot of different things, but no, I've never seen anything quite like this before. It's just different, but neat. But we honestly really don't know what it is. There's theories abounding, even from credible scientists, that there's a possibility that there's creatures in the high atmosphere. Uh, just like in the ocean, creatures have evolved, just like on land, creatures have evolved. And so why not in the air? There's food there. There's minute plankton in the air. There's moisture. So, you know, there's all kinds of theories. Even the uh, astronauts from the ISS have seen things below that are in the atmosphere. Now, a lot of this stuff is classified. So, you know, who really knows? Maybe the scientists at NASA have been studying this already, and they, they do know. But um, it's just something very interesting we happened to catch, capture that day. It has a, a top that almost just sits very still, but it almost has this sweeping motion going on um, of the under part of it that almost looks like, I mean, 
I'm, call me crazy, but like it's sweeping out maybe plankton or food or, or something. Like it, it almost, it looks like it's floating across the underside of an ocean almost. Like it, it just, it just screams biological. I just know that it was a silvery white dot and we zoomed in on it with our cameras. We had P900s, Nikon P900s, which have um, 80 times zoom, the equivalent of 2000 millimeters. And it's very hard, especially if you're holding it freehand, to focus on something that far away. It was a pretty good long record. I remember we started shooting it. We start we started seeing it, and I was having camera problems for maybe like ten minutes, and I was I was getting more and more panicked because it's in the sky and I want to see it, and I'm having autofocus problems. And Rob got, I bet you seven, ten minutes of footage before I even locked in. And then once I locked in, um, and figured out my camera, it was still another five, ten minutes after that. It was probably in the sky for about 20 minutes. Now, is this location known? To, is that why you went there? Because there's known to see these type of things there? Yes. Uh, there's a group of sky watchers um, that regularly go to that park, and they regularly see things during the day. Now, you know, a lot of these things might be just simple balloons, but there's a lot of strange things as well. So, you know, I really can't, I really can't say. Once again, you know, when you investigate this phenomenon, there's more questions than answers that come up. This particular one is very interesting in that it, it almost seems that it could be live. Yeah. And uh, we just don't know. It's the only one of that kind we've captured. I know that people around the world have captured similar things. Um, and, you know, the question is, is it just balloons that are tied together? Uh, is it a weather balloon somehow? Or is it actually something more interesting, like a, a skyborne atmospheric creature? But it's the biological nature of this one that has me stumped. Like, I mean, I mean, I don't understand any of them, but this one just really is a head scratcher. It looks like a biological thing like it looks real it looks alive and to me I've seen a lot of orbs I've seen a lot of things that shoot around things that elongate and collapse back in a lot of really neat things but this one just looked like he was like a cool just chill dude hanging out across the sky and it was it was just like watching a fish a, a aquarium or something like that it was just really neat and once again it's this is something that's just starting to be studied because is there any reason why things cannot live in the atmosphere at the high altitudes, very gelatinous-like creatures that have food there to live in the form of plankton? Um, in the same way that creatures live in the ocean, in the same way that creatures live on, on the land. So just don't know. We're trying to keep an open mind, and we would love to capture something like that again. If you stick your head in the ocean and you don't see any fish, does that mean there's nothing in the ocean? There was maybe, I don't know, I don't even remember, like 10 or 15 people there. And I think it was just Kelly and I of the group that were able to actually capture this thing and follow it. Yeah. Because even if you lose it, trying to see it again with your naked eye and then trying to, I mean, it's so difficult. But yeah. we were pretty excited that day. We were pretty pumped. And in fact... When we were driving there, we were kind of asking each other in the car what we'd like to see today. And I actually said, oh, I'd like to see something like a jellyfish. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is there some kind of a connection that way? I have no idea. All yeah. I know is that we did see that. We called it the jellyfish. And, you know, we traveled to many other places after that. And we continue to travel today and, you know, have many experiences. But that would be for another call. We always do research into trying to find out what it could be in the sky. I mean, we look at every kind of balloon that they make, trying to find anything that's manufactured that would even look remotely like that. But that one's, it's kind of a, it's just a, a brain, brain stumper. If you had to guess, and maybe it was too far away to guess, but could you tell how high it was up in the sky? I would say it had to be at least twenty to 30,000 feet. Oh, wow. And I would say it had to be at least um, something like five to ten miles away. I mean, I really don't know. Yeah. I mean, those are just wild numbers I'm throwing out there because unless you get 
scientific about it and do triangulation with two cameras and all the scientific measurements that go with it, it's very difficult to figure out the distance. Uh, as a hot air balloon pilot, I haven't seen anything strange in the sky, unfortunately. But from being up in the sky at that height, I do know that the air is uniform. It's moving all along at a constant uh, speed in a constant direction. And so when we saw this uh, crazy thing in the sky, and when we fast forwarded the video and could see the thing swinging back and forth, like pivoting from one part, we had to ask the question, is it live? Is it a creature of some kind? Is it feeding on, you know, plankton in the sky, which there is. Mm -hmm. So because being a hunter balloon pilot and knowing that the air is uniform, that object really should have been all together connected as one moving through the sky, if it was say balloons or something. But it's strange that the top part was fixed and the bottom part was swinging back and forth. So it, once again, it's just left us with a lot of questions, a lot of, I mean, people are, find the video interesting, but you know, in order for scientists to study something like this, you need to see many more videos, you need to set up experiments. It's just an interesting thing at this point. Um, and yeah, I've seen the ones that you're talking about from the International Space Station, or I've seen something they call UFO worms just kind of floating around out there. Is that what you're speaking of? Uh, yes, that's one of the things. Uh, I've, I've seen those videos too. And once again, that's probably classified NASA uh, footage uh, that's been leaked. Uh, certainly they've likely studied it and have information on it that we don't have access to. So, you know, it's very likely that there is something around this whole idea, but we don't have access to all the information. The only thing that happened in our case is we happened to spot it, we happened to film it, we have a lot of questions, and it's just a very interesting thing for us. Have you um, been back to the place where you captured the one we're gonna feature in the show? Have you been back to that park? I haven't been back in recent years, but we did go out there for several months, um, like many times over a period of several months, and we captured many other um, objects, but they're mostly mundane objects. There was nothing that seemed to be alive like that one. When, the, when you first, I do remember when I hadn't seen anything, um, but I'd heard Rob's explainings and, and him telling us what happened in his newspaper articles. And I mean, there was never a doubt in my mind. Like, I never doubted him. But when you actually start to see that that yourself, it's, it's, it's almost like, a, oh, yes, they're showing me as well. And it's just, I don't know, euphoria. It's, it's just amazing to be able to see stuff like that. And if you don't see things like that yourself, you just need to get more experience. You need to hang out with people that are. You need to open your mind up to it. I mean, anybody can see this stuff. And once again, I'm not saying that it is alive. We just don't know. Yeah. But, you know, if you drew a list and said the pros and cons and the, the things, you know, are they balloons? Is it a creature? There's many things indicating it could be a creature. There's many things indicating it could be just balloons. Right. Don't know. I really don't know. But that's the most compelling one that we caught from that part. Yeah, it almost looks like, I don't know, not bubbles, but how would you describe it? Because we're going to show it and possibly even those photos, if you are willing um, sure. to share them with us. Like when viewers look at it, how would you describe it? Can you kind of like, like you described it to me with the neck and like the head, can you kind of describe what you see? Well, you know, once again, like, do you remember when you were a little girl and you laid on the lawn with your friends looking at the sky and watching the clouds go by Yeah. and your imagination run yeah. and you can see all kinds of creatures, you yeah. can see pigs, dogs, everything, right? Yeah. We did the same thing. And when I let my imagination run, you can see a head, a neck, uh, possibly even eyes and a mouth on that thing. Yeah. I mean, once again, that's really just fun imagination. But right. I would say let the viewer decide for themselves. 
you know, yeah. pictures. And maybe somebody who watches your show will contact you and will have the answer. When you, when you stop just believing what people tell you and you open your eyes and you go out and you experience it and you listen to the other people around their experiences, I mean, you, it's a whole world of possibilities. I don't know what's out there. All I know is that I don't know. Yeah, I saw personally three like lights and they kind of were going in a circle at the top. Yeah, but. yeah. And, and it really has like a neck-like form that's darker and it's like, is that the throat? Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. It's really a, a very neat capture, and it's anybody's guess what it is. I really hope that when you show this, somebody who watches it will contact you and say, I have the answer. Yeah. If I could sum up the experience, I would say that on that day when we captured it, we were so excited. When you explain it to people, if they're not, if they are close-minded right away, I mean, you're not going to get past an introduction, but that's fine. You're, this isn't something to push on people. But when you actually have the footage and you can be like, look, I'm not saying what this is, but what is that? It really gets people thinking. I guess, you know, when you look around out there and you see things that you can explain, it's like, yeah, whatever. When you see something and capture something that you have no explanation for, it, it really is a bit of an adrenaline rush. It's exciting. It was exciting to capture it on film. It was exciting to go back to our place where we were staying and put it on the big screen and see it. Yeah. Uh, it was just exciting and exhilarating. And, and still to this day, five years later, there's a big question mark. What was it?